So we ended our last lecture in histology, lecture one, with looking over the stratified squamous epithelial tissue. And what we see is stratified tissue is regenerated from below. Um, and we went over that the, once again, the stratified squamous epithelial is a thick membrane composed of several cell layers. The basal cells are cuboidal or columnar and metabolically active. The surface cells are flattened squamous. In the keratinized type, the surface cells are full of keratin and are dead. The basal cells are active in mitosis and produce the cells of the more superficial layers. Function again is to protect underlying tissues in the areas subjected to abrasion. The location, uh, non-keratinized type forms the moist linings of the esophagus, mouth, and vagina. The keratinized variety forms the epidermis of the skin and dry membranes. So if you look in the picture here, here you can see the nuclei of the cells. Uh, look how these cells have that flattened appearance look. Uh, these would be the stratified squamous epithelial. Here's that basal membrane. Here's a, a next type of tissue that we're going to get into called connective tissue. Stratified cuboidal epithelial tissue is, is pretty rare. Um, there are generally two layers of cube-like cells. Um, the function of the stratified cuboidal is for protection. And the, these can be found in large ducts of sweat glands, mammary glands, and the salivary glands. So you can see pictures here of where the stratified cuboidal epithelial cells would be. So again, looking at the picture here, here you have the basement membrane. Here you have, and it's uh, generally two cell layers thick, so uh, not a lot there as far as being stratified. Um, the cuboidal epithelial cells coming around and there would be the duct lumen. Um, when you hear the word lumen, that's like a space. So here's the, the space that that duct or some type of, of vessel would be. Stratified columnar epithelium, that is also a rare tissue type. Uh, it is several cell layers thick. Basal cells are usually cuboidal. Um, superficial cells are elongated and columnar. Um, its functions here are for protection and secretion. Rare in the body, it's found in small amounts in the male urethra and in large ducts of sun glands. So here again, you can see the stratified columnar epithelial cells. Um, they are elongated. And then here we have that basement membrane. And then here is underlying connective tissue. Our next type would be transitional epithelium. Um, transitional epithelium is a, is a special type of tissue. Uh, we know that our, our basic type of tissues are the simple and stratified, and then we have versions of squamous tissue, cuboidal, and columnar. But in addition to those tissue types, there are, we do have two spe specialized epithelial tissues. This would be the transitional epithelium tissue, and the other type of specialized epithelial tissue was the pseudostratified columnar epithelium. What makes transitional epithelium tissue special is that transitional, when you think of transitional, it means some sort of change. So transitional epithelium implies changeability. And this tissue type has the ability to change in response to tension. It forms the lining of the urinary bladders and the ureters. So the transitional epithelium, picking up uh, from the interruption there, it forms the lining of the urinary bladders and ureters. So uh, these tissue types have the ability to change in response to tension. And what's pretty unique about them is they can stretch and then relax. And, the tr and because these transitional epithelium cells consist of several layers of cuboidal cells, um, when the bladder is distended, it is filled with urine and the epithelial stretches that the outer cells take on this squamous or flat-like appearance and the transitional epithelial don't allow anything to get through there. So it, it still 
these are still tightly packed cells and it doesn't allow the urine to diffuse into the internal environment. So that's why they're called transitional epithelial cells. So looking at the description there, you can see they resemble both stratified squamous and stratified cuboidal. Um, the basal cells are cuboidal or columnar, cuboidal or columnar. The surface cells, um, they are dome-shaped and squamous-like depending on the degree of organ stretch. So the function of these cells, uh, they stretch readily and permit distension of the urinary organ by contained urine. The location, of course, then would be the lines of the ureter, the bladder, and parts of the urethra. So here you can see the transitional epithelial cells. Uh, here you can see that basement membrane to which they are attached and then the underlying connective tissue below. So uh, a little bit about membranes and glands. Uh, the endothelium, endo meaning inside, uh, the endothelium, and if you look here, the heart, the endothelium is a simple squamous epithelium that lines the interior of the circulatory vessels and heart. Mesothelium, meso means in between. The mesoepithelium, these are simple squamous epithelium tissue that lines the uh, peritoneal, pleural, and pericardial cavities and covers the viscera. So viscera uh, is organs, so you have that visceral tissue. All right, glands. Um, glands basically, in general, consist of one or more cells that produce and secrete uh, some sort of product. Most glands are composed primarily, primarily of epithelium in which the cells secrete their product by exocytosis. So they're getting rid of the product, pushing it out of the cell, uh, usually in some sort of vesicle. So during secretion, the contents of a vesicle are released when the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane. Remember that all cells have uh, plasma membranes. So the mucus secreting goblet cells uh, within the columnar epithelium lining of the digestive tract are single cells and the glands with the ducts that secrete the products onto the outer surface, sweat glands and mammary glands, or into a cavity such as the pancreas. These are called exocrine, exocrine glands. Um, the ducts can be simple or compound. And basically, so these glands produce and secrete needed substances. Um, they are often aqueous, so their, their products are aqueous, which means are water-based. Um, often you have the mucin, so that would be the mucus, and the mucus itself, the mucin is, is, is the stuff um, that's being secreted. And then when you talk about mucus in general, that would include mucin and the water product. So uh, if you go back to cell structure and function, the protein product is made in the rough ER, basically those ribosomes, and then from the ER. And, and if you think about the whole complex of things, you have the instructions contained in the DNA, and then you have uh, protein synthesis occurring. So you would have that messenger RNA coming out, attaching to the ribosome, and then you have transcription and translation, and then you make that protein out of ribosome, and then that protein will go and get manufactured in the Golgi apparatus where it's modified and then packaged in a vesicle and then shipped out to where it is needed. It's going along some type of uh, motor protein there carrying along the cytoskeleton and it's released from the cell by exocytosis. So the classification of types of glands in the body um, by where they release their products, you have exocrine glands and these are external secretion of body surfaces such as the skin or into body cavities. Um, and an example of there would be uh, the pancreas, uh, mammary glands, so on and so forth. Uh, you have endocrine glands. These are uh, secrete messenger molecules, such as hormones, uh, which are carried by blood to target organs, or ductless glands. So that would be the uh, endocrine glands. And then by whether they are unicellular or multicellular. So it depends on uh, where they are. So exocrine, exocrine glands, they are unicellular or multicellular. So here you can see the 
uh, secretory vesicles here, and here's the nucleus of that cell. The unicellular exocrine gland is a goblet cell scattered within epithelial tissue lining of intestines and respiratory tubes. Um, the product there would be that mucin, and mucus is the mucin and the water. Now, if you want to think of it, think of uh, mucin and, and mucus. These are protective barriers against bacteria and viruses. So uh, it pro provides some sort of barrier to protect uh, internally from those things. So when you get a cold, you tend to produce more mucus, and hence you, you get that runny nose. So you increase the mucus production uh, in, in the cells and you start to get that runny nose to protect from additional invasion of bacteria and viruses. So multicellular exocrine glands, um, the epithelial tissue is walled. It's a duct and a secretory unit. So here you can see these simple duct structures and the ducts are, are not branched. So here you see tubular secretory, uh, secretory structures. Um, simple tubular is an example of what you would find in the intestinal glands. Um, branch tubular is an example of what you find in the stomach or what we refer to as gastric glands. You have the alveolar secretory structure and you have the simple alveolar and that's uh, no important example in humans but then you have the simple branched alveolar structure and that would be the sebaceous glands or oil glands of the skin. Down here you have compound duct uh, structures. These are, are ducts that are branched. You have the compound tubular. An example would be the duodenal glands of the small intestine. You have compound alveolar which would be representative in mammary glands and you have a compound tubulo alveolar, which would be examples of salivary glands. So you could see their structures there. So you could see in the, the light shaded yellow surface there, that would represent the surface of the epithelium. And then you have the, the dark goldish color, that would be the duct itself. And then you see the red outlining there, that would be the secretory epithelial tissue. So this is all examples of multicellular exocrine glands. So examples of exocrine gland products, speaking of mucus, I'm, I'm getting a cold here, but um, many types of mucus secreting glands, sweat glands of skin, oil glands of skin, salivary glands of mouth, um, the liver for production of bile, uh, pancreas, digestive enzymes uh, would be produced there, and then in the mammary glands, that would be for the production of milk. Endocrine glands, um, these are ductless glands uh, they release hormones into the intracellular space and the hormones play a role as messenger molecules. So when you talk about homeostasis and those negative and positive feedback loops, um, here's where we'd see examples of where hormones are, are, are key. Um, hormones enter the blood and travel to specific target organs to trigger the release of certain substances or the uptake of certain substances. So um, we also have epithelial surface features. Epith epithelial surface features include the lateral surface. And here's where we have adhesion proteins. Um, it's the tongue and groove, groove wavy contours. And you have a cell junctions. And then you have a <clears throat> basal surface. This would be the basal lamina non-cellular sheet of protein together with reticular fibers that form basement membrane. And then you have the uh, apical surface. So just a quick uh, overview of each of these. The tight junction, that will form an impermeable barrier, impermeable barrier because the adjacent plasma membrane proteins actually join, producing that zipper-like fastening. So in the stomach, digestive secretions are contained, and in the kidneys, the urine stays within the kidney tubules because the epithelials are joined by these tight junctions. In gap junctions, uh, that forms when the two adjacent plasma membrane channels join, and this...